Hello, and welcome back to the Adrian Bauer Project. Hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. Many, many thanks for choosing to click on my thumbnail and watch my content. All very much appreciated, as always. OK, so we're on to part four, looking through my music DVD collection. And as you notice from the title today, uh, it's going to be a bit of a Iron Maiden special. Uh, that is because the amount of Iron Maiden DVDs I've got uh, takes up one of the uh, small compartments which I'm doing it bit by bit because I want to do this video in bite-sized chunks if I did it all in one go nobody would watch it it'd be about an hour and a half long so uh, little snippets like this I think is a hell of a lot better and like I say um, I've got that many Iron Maiden DVD uh, music DVDs it would actually fill one of the sections up so I thought I'd just do it as an Iron Maiden special and then for the next episode we'll get back on track alphabet alphabetically if I can even get my words out okay so without further ado I'll put my glasses on because I'm blind as a bat <laughs> and we'll <coughs> excuse me get on with the first one and this first one comes with a little warning to it if you see this on the store you know, we buy all music from be it HMV, Amazon, wherever you go. So the first one up is Iron Maiden and the new wave of British heavy metal. Now, I've got a warning with this. This is not an Iron Maiden approved DVD. Iron Maiden uh, didn't have anything to do with this other than the fact that they probably say, yeah, it's OK to mention us because we're all part of the same movement. What this is, is a documentary spanning from 1979 to 1983-84-ish, covering the history and the back history of the new wave of British heavy metal, which is an era I absolutely adore, perhaps one of my favourite uh, moments in uh, metal history. Um, on here you get the likes of, because I'm really struggling here because the writing's a bit small, but We've got interviews uh, with, you know, Brian Tatler from Dime Nerd, Dennis Stratton, um, Malcolm Dome and Jeff Barton, who, who wrote for Krang Magazine, uh, Jerry Ewing, Neil Kay, the legendary Neil Kay. Uh, if you don't know who Neil Kay was, he was the person that gave Iron Maiden uh, a little a little bit of a, a leg up shall we say uh, in their very very early days um, it's an excellent watch this it's a, a good couple of hours long really delves into it you get to hear all about bands such as Angel Witch, I Made of course, Tiger Pantang feature heavily, Diamond Head you know um, from the stick Praying Mantis, Girl School, yeah, the list is endless. If if you love the new wave of British heavy metal, or you just love heavy metal in general, and you want to know where it all got its kickstart from in the early eighties, then I would massively, massively say go out and, and get yourself this. It's an awesome little documentary. Okay, right, let's get in to the proper Iron Maiden stuff. And um, first one up, we've got Iron Maiden. The number of the beast classic albums now this was in the series that i think the bbc uh first commissioned i think you can now see this on sky arts it keeps cropping up a lot uh it tells you the the back history about the recording of number of the beast and all the little shenanigans that went on there uh, it's a well-told story if you're an i maiden fan Whatever degree of Iron Maiden fan you are, you'll you'll know the stories behind this. Um, you know, this DVD does have a few little extras that you don't get to see on the television either. Also, 
appearing on here is the late, great Martin Birch. Um, there's a couple of stories on there that are fantastic. Uh, what a guy. What a, often cited back then is the fifth member of Iron Maiden. I think without him, um, would have Iron Maiden been as huge as they were? Mm, yeah, no, there's, there's some say yes, some say no, but he did his, his part in the meteoric rise to Iron Maiden in the way he recorded them and how they were packaged and everything. So there we go, that's the first one up. Right, next up we've got the history of Iron Maiden, part one, the early days. Now this, you have to take your hat off to Steve Harris because when the um, Maiden released DVDs, everything that appears on the DVD has to get his nod of approval. And you know, because of that, you're gonna get a quality, quality purchase. It's not gonna be something that's been rushed together by some cash grab record label. Every single piece of film on there has been handpicked and vetted by Steve Harris himself. So what you get in here, it's a two disc uh, DVD. On DVD one, you get the classic Live at the Rainbow concert, which was, I think, EMI's first full length concert on video when it was back in the day of VHS and Betamax. I think that was their very first release. Featuring, of course, Paul Diano. It's from the Killers tour when they appeared at the Rainbow. It's only about half an hour long, but it's half an hour of uh, music that a lot of bands wouldn't even be able to touch nowadays, playing three hours on stage. That's how great it is. Uh, the second one up is one called Beast Over Hammersmith. Now, this was when Bruce first joined. I don't think the album had been released yet because it was a bit, a bit delayed on the number of the beast tour uh, what happened were they filmed the performance at the hammersmith in london back in 1982 but the uh, the quality wasn't up to par as steve harris had liked uh, i think uh, the lighting was a bit rough and the the sound on it wasn't great but we still get to see it in its entirety on this one then you've got one from 1983, it's live in Dortmund when they appeared. Um, I think it was it was some kind of monsters of rock affair in Germany. Uh, there was, I think there was a stage at either end and you got the likes of Scorpions on and Judas Priest on, I think. And what it was that uh, down one end of the hall, if you just watched say Judas Priest and you were down at the front, then when Iron Maiden come on, because everybody turned around and you were automatically at the back. That's how it worked out. But um, there we go. I think it was uh, a bit shocking for the time for the German telly because I think uh, that's when they kicked the living shit out of Eddie and decided to pull his brains out live on stage. Um, I think there was a, a lot of the stations in Germany actually cut that bit off uh, when it was broadcast. So there we go. That's, that's all on this one. Then on disc two, you've got the part one of the history of Iron Maiden. Uh, this is the really uh, early days. It's a good full hour, hour and a half, if not that, it's 90 minutes, so it's an hour and a half. So uh, giving you the really early days up until they were signed. Fascinating watch. Um, if you're into the history side of your favorite bands and absolutely, this is essential buy. Then of course on there, you've got uh, a rare to a uh, 20th century box. It's a rare TV documentary. I think that's uh, when uh, New Wave British Heaven with heavy metal was taking big leaps and strides. So, of course, the TV had to get their little uh, pound of flesh from it, didn't they? So, but it's still, still a great watch. And then Live at the Ruskin, which is a 45 minute uh, video. Uh, the sound quality isn't great on that. I think it's done from the camcorder of the time. Uh, little fact as well, when I was in Power Slave UK, I made a tribute. We played live at the Ruskin and that was July the 15th. I think it was 2006, something like that, 2005. 
around that era. But yeah, we played on the very same stage as Iron Maiden did on that video. And uh, that's one of the memories I will never forget. We had an awesome night that night. Okay, next up we have Visions of the Beast. This is another two DVD package. Uh, this is all the promo videos on two handy discs. Uh, starting with women in uniform, Rothschild into the hills, it goes through uh, to Tail Gunner on disc one. Then on disc two, the first one up is Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. And we go all the way down to Brave New World. Um, there's some awesome little uh, opening menus on the front of this. Uh, somebody did tell me that there are certain parts of it that you can click on and there's some hidden little gems or something like Easter eggs or whatever it is that you click on and uh, it's supposed to show you content that isn't listed on it. I've tried and tried and tried. Sorry, <laughs> went all Freddie Mercury then. Uh, but I haven't found myself, so whether that's true or not, I don't know. But absolutely awesome DVD. I've seen this on many a car boot sale. Uh, if you can get out of it, I would, because it's absolutely fantastic. Love that. Okay, next one up. Rockin' Rio. Absolutely awesome uh, concert DVD, this. Uh, for a long while, it was my favourite Iron Maiden live uh, DVD. This was, uh, you've got, uh, it was recorded at the Rock in, Rio Fe Rock in Rio Festival in 2001. And there's 19 tracks on it. This is the full show and it is absolutely awesome. Two disc sets again, as you can see. There we go. Let's get two handy discs. So you get the, uh, the concert. On this one, on this two, you get candid interviews. Uh, I think that's when they go around. Uh, is it Machu Picchu? Around that way, I'm going into the old ruins and that. There's loads of interviews. Uh, uh, Day in the life, which is, I think that's when they go around all all the sides of Machu Picchu. And there's a Ross Halfin photo there on there, which you'll get photos that you'll not be able to find anywhere else. Again, absolutely awesome dvd can't highly recommend that one enough okay next one up and it's absolute classic iron maiden live after death now slap on the wrist for me the live after death till the last time i saw iron maiden so back in 1984 all that time and i, I keep meaning to go and see them but whenever they play i haven't got the money or i'm working and i can't get so it's just one of those things life Life doesn't find a way this time, life gets in the way, so there we go. Uh, so, if you remember the VHS uh, release of Live After Death, uh, this was taken from a Power Slave tour, obviously. Absolutely awesome gig, this. And uh, again, it's another two disc, two disc affair. On this one, you get the full uh, concert on there. And then on disc number two, you get part two of the history and the Iron Maiden documentary. Uh, it's not as long as the first one, but still absolutely fascinating to watch. Uh, then you get the Iron Maiden behind the Iron Curtain uh, video. Again, that was another VHS release when they went and played in Poland, I think it was. One of the first bands to go behind the Iron Curtain and play. That's absolutely fantastic. And then We've got uh, live footage from Rock in Rio uh, in 1985, sorry. Uh, that was taken from a, a television broadcast, so the quality of the, the video there isn't great. Uh, but it was when, uh, I think, did Steve Harris clock... Uh, oh, no, it wasn't, sorry. I'll get this right, I'll get this right. Bruce ran into one of the cameras that was filming. It got blood pouring down his face. He's running around looking for a towel and Ross Moore was like, no, no, leave it. It looks great. Get back in front. So he's doing uh, off the gig with his face covered in blood. And yes, it did look great. So, yeah. And then we get uh, Hello Texas, which is another little video. And then you get a, a gallery. Again, absolute packed to, to this version. Fantastic buy. You have to take your hat off to Steve Harris. He makes sure 
that the fans are looked after properly and going, what they spend the money on is going to be well worth being spent on. That, that is usually a good uh, monitor, I think, uh, for when you know it's something that Steve Harris has put all his soul into and when there's some unscrupulous money-making record type just trying to make a fast buck. Uh, you know, if I'm not a big fan of these re-releases that keep coming out. They've re-released the back catalogue so many times now. It's sort of like, well, who is behind all this? It does make you wonder, but stuff like this that you can't get because it was on it on uh, VHS, which is a, a mode of watching uh, your music that you can't get anymore. So get on DVD. Absolutely fantastic. But like I say, what an awesome DVD that is. Which brings us now to my favourite Iron Maiden live DVD, and it is Back on the Road. Absolutely love this. Uh, again, this is a two DVD that version. Now, this is because it's got two different audio selections on this. You've got stereo only, which is the one I've watched, but if you've got uh, one of those lovely surround sound setups with 95 speakers hanging out the back of your head, they do a 5.1 Dolby digital mix, which you'll get a lot, a lot of uh, little tweaks that you wouldn't hear on that. Make me sound a lot different. Oh, I just remembered there's a third disc here, actually, so it's a three disc, and you get another disc with all special features, which I will tell you about now. If I can read them, I'm going to I'm having to do it like this because the lighting here is not great. So, on the concert disc, you've got the Back on the Road tour, so you, you know, they're opening with like Wildest Dreams, going into Rothschild, you've got the top lights of Rainmaker, No More Lies, Hallowed Be Thy Name, Run to the Hills. You know the set list, it, it's awesome. And then on the special features disc, you get a Death on the Road documentary, uh, Life on the Road documentary, uh, there's, uh, the fans, which is talking about all the fans that come, come to see them. And so then you've got uh, promo videos for Wildest Dreams and uh, Rainmaker. Um, you've got all the design sketches and everything as well behind that. And then you've got another photo gallery. Again, an awesome package DVD. I think a lot of metal bands, especially, have, uh, they've always looked to Iron Maiden of how do you package your band and how do you sell it? And you'll you'll see a lot of DVDs coming out now, this same format where you're getting all these extra goodies on it, um, where before you just get your DVD with concert and that's it, that's all you get. But Iron Maiden changed the whole you know, scenery, saying no, the fans deserve more, you can get this on and this on. And everybody else has just copied them, aren't they? So there we go. Absolutely love that. Next one up is I made in Flight 666, and I've got the little the little book version with mine, which has got all like extra extra photos and things in and write up. Again, I absolutely love this film. I think it was shown at, uh, at the cinema, wasn't it? Um, I think when I was in Power Slave, Paul, the other guitarist, went to the pictures to see it. I said it was absolutely awesome. Uh, this is uh, the two disc version again. Uh, so on DVD one, you get the Iron Maiden Flight 66 film, whole film. So you've got interviews and behind the scenes interspersed with live performances, you get whole live songs or whatever. Absolutely brilliantly made film, absolutely love it. On uh, DVD 2, you get all the concert uh, coverage, but without the snippets of filming, so it's like you're watching a live DVD. So it's uh, it was filmed, a track it's filmed in each of the 16 uh, cities, but it's all glued together to make it look like uh, one, one long video. And that, that's awesome. Absolutely love that. Um, if you can get it, grab all of it. Absolutely fantastic. Right, the next one up, Iron Maiden on Vivo. Uh, this was, uh, what was the name of the album? I can't remember the name of the album now. 
it was it's the name of the album that is just totally final frontier that's the one <laughs> oh god i'm getting old i'm 56 mine's not what it was what am i talking about oh yeah this on vivo is from the uh, final frontier video now when that album came out it set the metal world into a panic just because of the title Final Frontier, is this going to be Iron Maiden's last album? Because they'd hinted that they always wanted to go out on a high. They didn't want to outstay the welcome. Was this going to be the final final album? And it was just the title of the album. And then they went and uh, toured the world with it. And this is live at the Estadio Nacional Santiago. And there's a reason why they do uh, a lot of concerts I know Maiden have done it, ACDC have done it, where they do the live DVD and it's from South America. It's because their crowds are absolutely mental. Now, you know, you go to a, a gig here and yeah, we all get into it and have a great time and that. It's nothing compared to South America. It, it is sort of, when I Maiden go to these kind of places, it's like a national holiday. And their their fans, probably the most rabid fans in the world. I'd, I'd love to go. South America to see somebody like Maine or a pre, uh, priest or ATEC just to sample what the crowds are like. It's so like, yeah, I've seen Bam before, I'm just here to see how, you, how the crowd reacts. No, no, absolutely mental, I tell you. But uh, again, this is uh, a two disc set, so you get to the full length concert, you've got to uh, Final Frontier, Two Minutes of Midnight, Coming Home, Down to Death Trooper. Evil Metman do Hello Be Thy Name Running Free, you know, the full full 10 yards with them. Then on disc, disc two, you get uh, Behind the Beast, which is another documentary all around this tour. Uh, you've got uh, Satellite uh, Satellite 15, Final Frontier, which is a premium video director's cut, the making of, and the Final Frontier World Tour show intro. So again, you're getting tons of stuff on this DVD. Absolutely love it. Go out and get it. Uh, next one up, we've got a repackaged uh, re-release. Uh, and this is I Maiden, Made in England, 88. Now, you could only get this on uh, VHS back in the 80s. Well out of print now, and this was the only way gonna, you were going to get it. And this was live concert recorded at Birmingham in NEC. 27th and 28th of November in 1988. Again, you get the full concert, absolutely awesome. You've got the types of uh, songs of Moonchild, Prisoners, Still Alive, Killers, and Can Wait, Wasted Years, my all time favourite Iron Maiden song, uh, Number of the Beast, Run to the Old Century. Loads more, absolutely fantastic. It's two disc release again, sorry, I didn't mention that. On the disc, Two, you get part three of the history of Iron Maiden. That goes from 1986 to 1988. Um, then you also get 12 Wasted Years, which was another VHS release that you can't get now, but now they put it onto DVD. So you can watch that with the first 12 years of the band documentary. And then you, with the extras, you get the promo videos, Wasted Years, Stranger and Strange Land, Can I Play With This, Evil That Man Do, and The Clairvoyant. I'm really hoping that the next DVD release that I made and do uh, will have part four of uh, the history of Iron Maiden on it. Plus, I'm hoping as well that uh, I can remember seeing it on the telly when Bruce left and they did that that final uh, final gig, didn't they? And they had uh, the magician on. I can't remember the magician's name, and they did a lot of like magic tricks with Bruce getting skewered and, and things and whatever on it. I think that was on VHS at one time. I've only ever seen it once when it was uh, broadcast on the telly, so I'm hoping they're going to be doing that. They'll probably do another two disc where they do a, you know, the live set for one of the latest tours, and then disc two will have the history, part four, and that and release. But you can only hope, so that's it. Okay, and fine, final one up on my list. It's just a little one that I almost forgot that I'd gotten. I've got Wildest Years on a DVD when it first came out. So you get uh, Wildest Dreams uh, promo video on that. 
and then you had the Nomad with the Rock Mix, Blood Brothers with Rock Mix. They are videos. They are just uh, uh, re uh, retweet songs from the album. And then there's a Dance of Death behind the scenes video on there as well. So again, it's like I say, even on a single package like that, Steve Harris has made sure that you got your money's worth. And thank you for that, sir. And that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed that one. Please remember, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to my channel. It'd be very much appreciated. And also, don't forget to ring that little notification bell. Also, if you've got Facebook, you can follow me at Adrian Bauer Project. And if you've got a Twitter account, you can follow me at Project Bauer. So, with all that in mind, I'd like to thank you all again for watching. And here's to seeing you all again on the next episode of The Adrian Bauer Project. Thank you.